outtakes? I don't know, maybe we'll just leave it at the beginning. Anyway, this is uh, Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and we're going to be reviewing the, without smashing my mic, the Asus Strix Overclock GTX 1080 Tie. Or as people keep moaning at me for saying, GTX 1080 Ti. I don't know, I just say Ti, Ti, read it out loud, Ti, I don't know. Yeah, anyway, so we've got this. Now there are two versions, I've got the more expensive OC model. So the price on the normal one on the Overclockers website at the moment is 790. 790 of your best British beer tokens. If you want the overclock model, which kind of does the overclocking for you already and it's got a slightly higher boost, then you're going to be looking at 810 of your best British beer tokens. Now they've done a lot of mumbo jumbo with a card because it does look like a Strix, but it's been supercharged. So really, so, the card up close. Now, if you didn't know, the card is actually kind of a 2.5 slot, but that's only gonna make a difference if you were going to try and fit the cards right next to each other like you would have to on an MATX board. If not, just run on a single graphics card, it's not gonna be a problem. Most um, boards now have uh, ample slots to be able to fit this anyway. So this is the Maximus 9 Extreme, and uh, it hasn't got uh, any heat sinks or anything on it because it comes with a water block and it's water only. Anyway, so uh, graphics card slots. You can see we've got one here and we've got one here, and this is what we would call the um, third slot because this, this would be the, the first slot. This is the second slot. So this second slot, because it's 2.5 times, it does kind of cover this, and if I was to put it down, you can see, if I was to add this graphics card in, you can see that it does kind of overhang on this one a little bit. But if I was to pick the board up, and we're just kind of holding it in place. Yeah, that's doing a brilliant job, Tom. So if I hold it in place, you can see it does cover that slot up, but this one here, it doesn't. So on most boards, you've got a decent amount of air. So, and the way to remember it is just to count down. So we don't count this one, and you've got one slot, two slot. So if it's 2.5 times, you know it's gonna cover over this one a little bit. And then your third slot, you know that's clear because it's three and we're only a 2.5 times graphics card. So that's an, you know, a relatively easy way for you to look at it and it's just to count down. And then you know, if it had a, just been a two slot card, then one slot, two slot, and then you know that this, the second slot, um, you know this one would have been clear, but where it was 2.5 times, it does cover this one up a little bit. So I'm, you get what I'm trying to say, there is a relatively easy way to it, because I always get people saying, can I SLI on this board? Can I SLI on that board? And really all you need is to go into Google Image and then you can work it out. So that would have been two slots, but where it's 2.5 slots, it covers up this one a little bit, so this one is unusable, so this is our, the slot that we can use. So you get what I'm trying to say, or at least I'm hoping you're getting what I'm trying to say, especially where I did keep covering it up with my hand. But anyway, it is a big beefy graphics card. I'm gonna assume that most people are just going to buy one anyway, so it's not gonna to matter too much. And by using that kind of as a guide, you can see whether you're going to be able to run it in your rig or not. But obviously there's a lot that we can talk about the heat sink. We've got the RGB here and RGB up here on the logo. We've not actually peeled the, the backing off of this one yet. So let's do that and let's just, none of that messing around anymore. That's too gone. Anyway, they, they have put this weird sticker on with GeForce GTX on it. And I've seen it on a couple of the other brands as well. So I'm assuming that um, Nvidia are, are forcing that and it's literally just a sticker as well but anyway so there's a lot going on the the actual cooler here is 40 percent thicker there's some super duper technology like direct contact technology going on underneath you can actually see that there's a proper brace that goes around the card as well and it does go around everywhere so we've got all that going on um, so it is a bit thicker. It does mean it's a bit heavier. The brace does mean that it should keep it nice and flat. They do go on about this super contact technology stuff as well. But really, the only way for me to be able to show you is for us to avoid the warranty. Not that I get any warranty, but it's got one of those little sticker things on it anyway. So we'll, 
we're going to take the cooler off. We're going to get her undressed and we're going to see her in all of her silicon finery. So, that's a bit of, there was a bit of tape down on this end. So we've opened her right up. So what I'm going to do is just disconnect the fan headers. There we go. So, stage one of her opened right up. You can see this big brace from all around the outside. What we can also tell as well is that this was in direct contact with the heat sink itself. So here's our heat sink, although we've still got a bit of thermal paste on it, but oh, who's that ugly one? Oh, look at his teeth. And there was quite a bit of thermal paste around the outside, but we've cleaned it all off. And like I said, the cooler was in contact with it. So it was this part that was in contact with it, although there is this large section as well. They really have made the most of the, the, the area because the fins actually do come down into this dead space. So around the back, while we are talking about it, these are your fan connectors and the connectors that come off the card for the RGBs and stuff. Then we do have our two PWM headers here and there's also this RGB header, which is kind of cool. It's a, it's a new one that I see and we've actually got another RGB header coming off of the card itself. So that's kind of funky. And it also does mean that if you wanted to run an RGB off of this with a different light to the rest of your rig, obviously in the Aura software, you'll be able to set the graphics card up differently to your motherboard or the, the, the fan headers, uh, sorry, the RGB headers on the motherboard. So this is just another really cool layer of um, possible customizing that you can do. Okay, so when we move on to performance, the first thing I need to do is remind you that you can go to the OC3D website, I'll make a card pop up, I, there's always a link underneath, and you can go there to see all of the graphs and all of our comparisons. I mean, um, when you do see our graphs, these are just the tip of the iceberg, especially with a product like this. We should some day just publish the full length ones, because literally it's ridiculous the amount of results that we've got. And that's why we always try and keep our test equipment the same, and that is so that we've got a lot of comparisons. We don't just take this, test another card, and then call that a review. That's more of a face-off. That's not, you know, a review, is it? Anyway, so go and have a look. Please do. Also, forums, if you want to come in and join in. If you've bought one of these cards or you're thinking about buying one of these cards, come and join in on the forums. So uh, 3D Mark first. Now, the 3D Mark graph, essentially, when I did do some overclocking, uh, one of the things I will say is um, it comes with a fairly kind of beefy boost out of the out of the box. As you've seen with the screenshots that we've done, you're getting peaks of over 2000 megahertz straight off the bat. You're getting 1970 megahertz as an average that's without changing a thing. It does all of that itself with the GPU Boost 3. You can change the offset if you want a little bit and add a little bit more to kind of the initial boost and then it, the GPU boost goes that little bit further. I only really managed 50 megahertz extra on that. In the games, it didn't make any difference um, or with a few games that I tried. And it's one of those ones where for that small amount of difference, I didn't retest everything. But you can see it in the 3D Mark graph. Point made. Anyway, so um, you've got the 1080 tie here, and then you've got the manual overclock, and then you've got the, because we've got the overclock card. So you've got um, 7,229 points. That's the normal one. If you went manual, it goes up to 7,388. So you get 150 points extra for that extra 50 megahertz and you have to, it makes it hotter because I had to add 10% onto the um, power percentage. Didn't touch the volts, you don't really need to on these. A lot of people sort of say to me, is the voltage unlocked? And I've had people moaning to me about it. You don't need to touch the voltage with these cards really. It's just the power percentage, give that a little bit of a tickle. But to be honest with you, they're running so high out the box it's not really a great deal that you can do with them. For me, all I would do is concentrate on getting the cooling happy. Um, and like I said, I've, I've tried adding more power boostage. I do try playing with the volts. Never makes any difference. Not on these anyway. So, um, and then the randomly, the Founders Edition, they're always, the ones that I get from NVIDIA, they're amazing. 
in that, no, I don't want to say that they're cherry picked, but they always overclock really, really well. So that kind of puts it in here. But the thing to kind of take from this graph is if you look at the difference between the 1080 and then going up into the uh, 1080 and 1070 SLIs, there's a fair old kind of uh, step and this kind of fits in between. So it's kind of like a 1080.5 or you know what I mean. It's kind of like having an extra half a 1080 nailed onto your rig when you look at these kind of numbers. Then um, the, the people are gonna shout, hooray, because I've added a new game in. We're doing uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands now as part of our test suite. So chuck this in there. There's only a few in there. You don't get the big massive graph because this is a new start for us. Sometimes we, when we start new games, we only have two or three results in. Uh, but this one, we, put, uh, um, we actually uh, did do a review on the game or a performance review on the game. So these are the results we, that we got from that. But now, this go, goes into our graphics card test suite. So this graph is going to get enormous over the next few months. Um, something I did notice and I wanted to bring it up in the video because it's kind of interesting, or I found it kind of interesting anyway, is if I bring up Hitman DX11 for you, you can see it's not in a particularly great place in the graph. But the, what I've done is I've sorted this in 1080. If you look at the other results, you'll see for 1440 and 4K, they're significantly better. But then when you flick it over to DirectX 12, it suddenly jumps to the top of the graph. Now, if I was to whiz through the Ashes of Singularity DX11 for you, keep an eye on the 1080 again, because it's sorted in 1080, but you can see that the 4K and 1440p are higher. But then we jump to DX12, the card jumps to the top of the graph again as well. So a weird thing, and it's not anything to do with the card specifically, but it does just go to show you that at 1080, it's not what I would consider as being brilliant. And uh, in some respects, even the 1080 could have outperformed it at 1080. But you turn the, um, uh, the, the resolution up and it fights back and it's at the top of the graph. But weirdly, when you flick from DirectX 11 to DirectX 12, it just romps the top in all of the resolutions. So there was just something I noticed there that it's clearly, it, it's, it wants to be stressed with a lot of res. Um, or if you're running one of the few games where you've got DX11 or DX12, if you've got the option for DX12, we've kind of noticed that it does perform better if you are gonna be, for whatever reason, running 1080 with an 800 pound graphics card. Anyway, so talking about 800 pounds, uh, there are gonna be two models. This is the overclock model which is going to be 810 pounds. And then you've got the, the one below it, which is the normal one, is going to be about 790. Now, obviously, that's an awful lot of money. And I know a lot of people are going to be instantly going on about, that's not the price of the Founders Edition. Well, we do kind of need to realise it's not a Founders Edition. Yes, you're going to be paying a little bit of extra money for what can only be described as an epic cooler that looks really nice it's nice and fat it's really quiet keeps the temperatures down as well don't forget this is running quicker yet it's cooler than the founders edition now the reason why it's cooler than the founders edition is you do need to remember is the founders edition is kind of they're designed and they're set to run at 85 degrees and what it will do is it will turn either the fan up or down as well as overclocking itself to keep it kind of running at 85 degrees but this, with this massive cooler, including being really quiet, was, uh, uh, like I've said, it was around the kind of 65 degrees mark with a half decent, you know, standard case airflow going on. You can practically turn the fans off because when I was doing that 72 degrees run, they weren't moving any air. They were just there almost for aesthetics. And it was almost in like a totally silent desktop kind of mode. Um, with it like that, it only went up to 72. Uh, and then you could hear the fans a little bit, but they weren't loud, do you know what I mean? I'm being exaggerative in, by saying you could hear them because you did kind of need to notice. And that was in an entirely silent room as well. So the cooler on it is epic. 
you're either going to love or you're going to hate the fact of the, the Strix design. I'm actually kind of well sold in this now and I really like it. There's another reason why I painted my one red and black is because, you know, I, I do kind of like this design. They've obviously gone overboard with the um, beefing up the cooler as well. And they've beefed up that kind of, it's not a back plate, but the brace that sits in the middle. You can see they've gone to a lot of effort with that to make sure the card sits straight doesn't warp, you know, that extra bit of weight dangling off of it. They've got done as much as they can do to kind of um, help with all of that. So if you're going to moan about the price, that's fine. I understand it's not for everyone. It's going to be best part of a month's wages for most people. It is expensive, but you do kind of need to realise that you are getting kind of a thousand pounds worth of graphics card. And I do kind of feel a little bit sorry about the Titan people. But we're going to put the, um, uh, the price to one side because I've found, already found even more expensive versions of the 1080 tie that are going to be coming out. So we're going to say 800 quid. Yeah, all right, forget about it. Award for it, though, it's an enthusiast award. You do need to work hard. Well, maybe you don't need to work hard, but you are going to need to um, be careful with money if you want to get one of these. If you do want to get one, you're going to be an enthusiast. But for the love of God, please make sure that you're at least on a 1440p monitor. To be honest with you, I personally think 1440p is the sweet spot um, between, because when you do go to 4K, you need so much extra grunt to be able to run 4K. And I am very much of the opinion I would rather have a slightly higher FPS on 1440p and turn all the bells and whistles up and all the eye candy then stress the bejesus out of my rig with 4K. So even, you know, me, the, the, the most I would go is if you wanted to get one of those super wides where it's kind of um, 1440, but you know, that little bit wider, that would probably be as high as I would personally go. And if I was gonna build my own kind of gaming rig from scratch, I would be getting a 1440p monitor, no matter what the budget was. I mean, let's face, it, yeah. So we'll, we'll go with that. So Enthusiast Award, they've done an epic job of it as well. Um, it's basically, it's kind of what you would expect. <clears throat> Some people might be a little bit disappointed that, that there's no real overclock in headroom, but that's because they've done it all for you already near enough. Um, and that's not a fault of the card, you're just at the limitations of the silicon itself. Um, so to be honest with you, I think they've done an absolutely cracking job. It's a totally bonkers mental card. I love it, I think you're gonna love it. And the only thing for me really to say right at the end is, if you keep an eye on the channel in about a week's time, I will SLI them as well. SLI them? Yeah, I've got to.